What's going on everyone, it's the Fake Weeb here, and today we're going to be reviewing chapter 182 of Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, quick reminder that there won't be a new chapter next week for all series in the Shonen Jump magazine due to what's called Golden Week, which is a week in Japan with many holidays, and this happens every year near the end of April, so look forward to the next chapter on the 8th of May. It kind of sucks because this chapter ends on a pretty nice cliffhanger, and we won't get to see the continuation for two weeks, however, we should be grateful because unlike other series, Black Clover will be going on a three month hiatus after dropping one of the biggest chapters this year. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything, but yeah, we shouldn't take it for granted. Anyways, as always guys, before I start the review, I would kindly appreciate it if you can drop a like on the video as that would help me out a ton, and consider subscribing to the channel for some more awesome Jujutsu Kaisen manga videos appearing in your sub feed. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Alright, so this chapter review is going to be a bit different than usual. Normally with chapter based fights, I would recap the entire fight and then break down the interesting parts I got from it. But instead of recapping everything, I'm just going to break down the important moments and cool dialogues because, you know, you guys already read the chapter and so I feel like if I went through every single fighting panel, then it's not really a review at this point, more of a recap. But yeah, it starts off with the continuation between Hakari versus Charles, and we see Charles holding a weapon called the G Battle Staff. Now, this is essentially to resemble a G pen, which is used for drawing manga, and so it's fitting for him having this sort of weapon since he's an aspiring mangaka. They break out of the Ferris wheel and land to a more open space outside. Charles then starts quoting one of the author's notes from D. Grayman. It was my dream to become an astronaut, but it seems like it wasn't meant to be. Instead, I'm thinking of traveling to space inside my head. And if we take a look at the first volume of D. Grayman, we have the quote which was similarly said by Charles, and I think that's really cool to see a D. Grayman sort of appreciation by Geke Ekutami. Now, Charles calls it a poem, and I love how Hakari is like, since when is an author's note considered a poem? I mean, if we take a look at any of Geke Ekutami's author's note, they're definitely not poems for sure. And basically throughout this whole fight, Charles explains his disparity of losing motivation. He says that every magaka leaves the world looking for fiction inside their heads. Reality is not enough to satisfy them. And I think us readers, or just any anime fan, or really anyone in general that consumes media can relate to this quote because seeing or imagining any fictional stories in your head is really just an escape from reality, makes a lot more sense to why he stated the author's quote from D. Grayman. You know, it was my dream to become an astronaut, but it seems like it wasn't meant to be. Instead, I'm thinking about traveling to space inside my head. If you're not busy, then please come join me. You know, sometimes the goals that you want to achieve in life don't happen, so you watch anime or see the main character fulfill their goals, which more or less could fulfill yours too. That escape from reality, you know, the fictional stories playing in your head, it's really a powerful thing. Moving on, as as they fight, Hakari has just been toying with Charles. He's been casually dodging his attacks, having his hands in his pocket, not really fighting seriously, until Charles hits him with his G battle staff. And that's when we get an explanation of his curse technique. Once the conditions are met, a little manuscript or manga panel attached itself to the opponent's chest. That manga panel shows the future of Hakari's next move. It's basically a clairvoyance ability. The supposed ability of perceiving things in the future or beyond normal sensory contact. And right now, Charles can see one second into the future, and as time goes on, as the battle progresses even further, the ink on his G staff will keep filling up and he'll be able to see more seconds into the future. So the best thing to do when facing a curse technique like this is to shut down the opponent as fast as possible. While Charles already has a 
1 second advantage, it would be worse if he later obtained a 5 second advantage. So Hakari begins to move quickly and starts fighting a bit more seriously. Charles mentions that if he hadn't used his curse technique, then he would have been a goner, since Hakari is so fast that the 1 second advantage is still not enough for Charles to read and react. Hakari notices that he still needs to confirm with his eyes to see into the future, so he hits Charles from the back since it's a blind spot, and Charles comments on his cursed energy feeling very rough and stiff. Even if Charles anticipates his blind spot, Hakari is still just too fast and diligent to get hit. After some very nice fighting panels, Hakari comes in close and says, An otaku like you will always find a reason to pick a fight, even over the simplest things. So, I've got to break you completely. And that quote can literally resemble the general anime and manga community as a whole, especially when it's on Twitter. It's actually crazy how we're getting told this in a manga chapter itself. And yeah, that quote from Hakari obviously pisses Charles off, on top of the the fact that he's just been getting attacked back and forth. And so as more time had passed, Charles is now able to see two seconds into the future. So now the blind spot attacks might not work with the extra second in hand. He shouts at Hakari saying, what are you going to do now? And Hakari knows that it's best to finish this fight right away before he gains any more seconds. So the chapter ends when he activates his freaking domain expansion. Wow, I did not see this coming at all, a domain expansion from Hakari in his first fight with Charles, and I know Charles is fairly strong considering he's got a clairvoyance ability that improves later on, but I think Hakari knows that there are stronger opponents in the Cullen games, so him using his domain expansion now could tell us that he can probably use domain expansion more than once. Because there's no way he would use his final trump card on the first opponent he met, especially if it's an opponent like Charles. And so the question is, does Hakari have a modern type domain like Gojo's, where you would need a vast amount of cursed energy to perform multiple domains in a day? Or is it an old type domain like Higuruma's where it's easier to cast multiple domains in a day because of the fewer factors the older domains has compared to the modern ones? I mean, we do see Higuruma summoning his domain expansion twice during his battle with Yuji, so by fewer factors, I mean that unlike modern domains, Higuruma's old type domain doesn't have the sure kill factor and violence is prohibited once caught inside. So these pre-established rules are what makes the old type domains easier to summon, thus a sorcerer being able to cast it multiple times a day. And that makes me believe that Hakari has a personal theme domain like Higaduma, where his domain is probably a casino that forces him and his opponent to gamble with each other. Whoever wins that gambling match gains the upper advantage, like how Higaduma gained the Executioner's Sword when Yuji lost his court trial. It would be really cool to see a casino themed domain and maybe Hakari and Charles will play poker, blackjack, cards, whatever there is and you know that makes sense to why the higher ups opposed Hakari and his abilities because it's related to gambling right which is like obviously taboo especially considering jujitsu regulations. But yeah a very fire chapter this week I really loved seeing Hakari in action and you know kind of toying with Charles throughout their battle found some Parts very comedic and overall entertaining. Still haven't gotten Hakari's exact curse technique explained, but I'm sure we'll find that out soon enough. You know, it's kind of funny how we're seeing his domain expansion before his curse technique, but yeah, nonetheless, I'm very excited for the next chapter. Let me know in the comment section down below what are your thoughts on this chapter? Any interesting details I missed? Predictions for the next one? I'd love to hear your thoughts. As you guys know, I do read the comment section. But, uh, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching another one of my Jujutsu Kaisen chapter reviews. It's been the fake weeb. And I'm out. Peace.